Hello people of the web and YouTube DDPK here and welcome to Hack Time. Anyway guys, today I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to make an invisible reverse shell with nothing but Windows tools and Netcat. Anyway guys, what Netcat is, it's supposed to be used for non-malicious purposes. It allows you to open up an IP address and a port and basically with that info, you can log in from another computer and execute commands and view files and things and... Netcat normally isn't supposed to be used maliciously like I said so to make it like invisible and to do all these things without the user knowing is the hard part. First of all I found it easier to just um use a USB rubber ducky to input everything and then have it automatically run even though you can do this with just a normal flash drive just copy the scripts on hit the VBS file launch the attack invisibly but then They'd have to keep the USB in for it to work. So you can see the problem here. That's why I, th that's why I found it easier to use a USB rubber ducky. Because then it just copies it all onto the computer. Downloads it from online and runs it. So yeah, with that said, like Netcat's not supposed to be used maliciously. Even though you can use it. But there is one flaw. You have to figure out what port they have is forwarded on their router. If you wish to like control this around the world, you know. Because natively, you're only going to be able to control and attack a system that's on the same network. So in my case, we're going to be running the attack on this tablet. But before, but before we do so, I'm actually going to execute it on my main PC right now. Because it makes more sense showing the code in action than talking about it than showing it. So I want to do things that way for today's episode. So yeah, 3, 2, 1. USB duckies in. And our payload should now be typing itself out again. Since this computer's a little bit faster than my Surface, that delays like unnecessarily long. And right here, that's where the good stuff's happening. We're downloading through PowerShell Netcat and um, unzip.exe. Because when you download Netcat, it comes in a zip file. And you can't host Netcat in a Dropbox or in a Google Drive or anything. Because it gets flagged as malicious software. But the bright side is that Windows does not seem to recognize Netcat as a virus or anything. Even though you may get like a prompt that pops up where you have to click it away, you can work around with this. You can use the USB rubber ducky to like Alt A, click that little prompt and get it away. But yeah, anyway guys, as you can see the attack's on. I can log into this computer right from my tablet if I wished, but... I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to show you guys what this um, payload executed and what it made. Now, first of all, these files go into your um, user directory. And just like the last video, you want to type in start, at, start dot in a command terminal in order to open up that location. But yeah, as you can see, I in the attack, I didn't make anything invisible, even though you can easily just put atrib commands here at the end and hide all the files so nobody even knows this is on the computer but i left that part blank because i wanted to show you guys what this necessarily did okay so what it did was it downloaded netcat in a zip and then it went to my dropbox and downloaded unzip.exe which is basically a command line um unzipping application and we're telling this exe to unzip netcat then we tell command prompt to navigate into this folder and then create the invis.bvs, which is the same file from the previous videos I've done on the USB rubber ducky, as well as this start.batch file, which has this code in it. Now what this code allows what bleh. now what this code allows Netcat to do is it activates a, a port on 190 in extra verbose mode, and then with the dash E command, we can tell it to execute a command in the background. Now you can make this open up anything, but I wouldn't recommend it because it said it was dangerous and I have a feeling it would actually crash the program if you tried to let's say open Photoshop up with um, Netcat but who knows if you do something like that let me know how you did it. But yeah anyway guys we're going to make Netcat execute command line and we put this L extension in which we don't need that's actually outdated I found out so yeah that's basically it we told it to listen on port 190 and from the attacker machine we just type in port 190 to a scan and connect to the computer and i will demonstrate this so don't worry but for now let's take a look at the code shall we because that's basically all we're going to do is we're going to download netcat in a zip as well as unzip and then we're going to actually run netcat so yeah we're only making three files actually five because two get made in this folder 
But yeah, anyway, guys, let's take a look at this, at the script, like I said. Now, first of all, we're doing the same thing as we did in the previous um, videos. We're opening PowerShell as an admin. We're navigating to the user directory. And from there, we're basically de deleting everything that might already be in that um, user directory folder. Now, I will be fixing this part up. I'm going to delete this part because I found out I don't need it because... Both of these files are going to be put in the netcat folder now, and originally they were outside the folder, which was stupid of me to do that. So these aren't going to be here in the final code, so just forget that part. Anyway, now here comes the cool stuff. This stuff is actually, um, it took me like goddamn hours to figure this out, even though it's a really simple thing to do. But you want to put unzip.exe, which I'll have a download link for that application in the description down below. You'll want to put that in a Dropbox, then share it. And once you share it, you're going to get a code that's going to be blah, 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 with a d DL equals zero at the end. Now, what you want to do here is you actually want to delete the zero, change it to a one, so it directly downloads the file. Because without that, you're going to download this whole HTML script thing from the actual Dropbox site, and you don't want that. But yeah, like I said earlier, you can't put netcat in a Dropbox, even though it would really simplify things if you could put just the netcat application in the Dropbox and download directly from it. Like I said, it's flagged on both Dropbox and Google Drive, but if you find a workaround, let me know, because this would shorten the code a lot if I could figure it out. But yeah, anyway, we download unzip, and then we go to netcat site, which is eternallyboard.org.misc netcat. Netcat Win32 version 111.zip. Now I'm going to leave this part of the code out and you're going to put your own link in because Netcat gets updated quite frequently I believe so you might have a different version than this so I want you to get the newest version possible so I'm going to leave that part of the code out you'll have to fill that in. And from there on out we just navigate to the user directory again which I don't think we actually need to do with all honesty. That. Yeah. If I can talk, God, I, I talk way too fast for my own good. Anyway, I don't think we need this part of the command too, so I may take that out. I just left it in because it made the script a little bit longer and allowed you guys to see what was happening. But yeah, we basically unzip netcat, and then we navigate to netcat's folder, which got made. Then we make our batch file, which just tells netcat to listen on port 190 with extra verbosity or whatever and launch cmd.exe. Again, you don't need this L command here, but I'll probably remove it before I put the code in the description. But like I said, you don't really even need a USB rubber ducky to pull this attack off. If you have enough um, social engineering skills, you can actually put this on like um, a flash drive and copy it over, then just run the, the invis.vbs and it will run in the background. Basically, it does the same thing. So all you really need are those invis and the batch file and all this and you're good to go you know but yeah i found it easier just to do it as a usb ducky script i guess so yeah and then that's basically it like we do the same thing we did before where we make the invisibility dot batch or vbs i mean and then we execute the batch file so yeah again like i said that's basically it and it, there is a problem with this however you won't get admin rights to the user's pc i haven't figured out a code to put in here yet but I know it is possible to run a batch file invisibly as an admin, so I'll fix that in the future too, as well as make it so that little, like, Windows firewall prompt doesn't pop up sometimes. Like I said, it pops up, like, every so often on certain machines I found out, but other machines they will just go, like, right through. And uh, antivirus, um, anything won't pick it up. Like, I had, um, Mac V, I had, uh... I forget what it's called. Avast, I believe. Yeah, I had Avast look for it. It hasn't picked out the file yet, and I've been doing this, like, code for weeks, so... Yeah, like I said, antivirus shouldn't pick this up, and, well, yeah, that's basically it. So how do we connect to this reverse shell? Like, it's practically pretty easy, and I'm sorry if I'm getting a bit flustered now. I'm just getting too into this. But, yeah, to connect to the reverse shell, you just um, type in port 190 and... The IP address of the machine once you're in the netcat. I'll show you how to do it in a second, but first I need to pwn this computer here. I don't have netcat on it, so let's plug our USB ducky in and let it download netcat, shall we? If I don't touch the touchscreen and fuck it up. 
that's the bad thing about the USB rubber ducky. Like, it, it, it still, you're allowed to use input on the screen while it's plugged in, which is pretty stupid. Like, they need to fix that. Like, make it so the screen gets locked out. You know, you can't move your real mouse or your keyboard, and this thing would be a beast, you know? But yeah, anyway, I just put Netcat on. It's running, done, like, what, eight seconds, maybe seven. It's a really fast script, and now from here, to get access to the victim's machine, you just have to navigate to Netcat on your own computer. You have to have Netcat on both machines in order to do this. You can't just connect to one with it. it it's weird, but... Yeah, to do this, you have to open up Netcat in command prompt like this. You just go to the directory of Netcat, type in NC, and the IP address of the machine, which is... Or dot five. I already found this out earlier, but if you don't want to like just type in IP addresses at random and try to connect, you can download several apps that will help you like do port scans and just like find all the open ports and IP addresses listed. That way you don't have to just um know the IP address to get in. It's it's another topic for another video, but for right now, yeah, that's basically it. You type NC, the IP address of the victim's machine, and the port number, which we specified as um 190 but then again you can change this to whatever you want specifically if you know that router has an open port you can actually port forward this online and attack them remotely from over the net which wouldn't be a good idea because other people could easily jump on that train since nothing's encrypted so really don't do that okay but you can do it if you want you know i'm not gonna force you Anyway, once you do that, you just hit enter, and guess what? I'm on my computer. As you can clearly see, this is DTPK's tablet, and this is Daniel's machine here. So, basically, the reverse shell is opened, and I can execute commands on this, such as I can actually log this thing off, I can hide files, I can um, delete files, I can make files even, but I cannot get CopyCon to work. Like, this would be perfect if you can get CopyCon to work while netcat's running if, if you know how to do that let me know because then you can actually execute more codes you can actually really fuck with somebody then but yeah anyway let's just take a look at all at everything we could do we can navigate our folders as you can see there's our um this is all the files in the netcat directory so let's get out of there i can go to my user directory and pull up all my files so there's my music folder on my tablet my favorites um there's the files we made, and basically, once you make the files, once you get logged into the reverse shell, you can even just delete the old files that you put on here. So let's delete um, the unzip.exe. I believe that's the right syntax. Nope. Um, oh, I put um. <laughs> and yeah, anyway, God, if I can put an N, what the hell's happening? There we go. Anyway, you can do that, delete the files, and it will look like nothing's even on here. Like, hell, you can even do an atrib command on the netcat's folder and hide netcat entirely. That way, no one knows it's running. But, yeah, from here, you can do basically anything. You copy netcat, that batch file, and everything into the startup folder, and bingo bongo, you always have a reverse shell opened all the time, you know? So... Yeah, I did this mainly just to shorten the code. It just, uh, you can do the rest on your end, you know. You don't have to add the rubber ducky do anything for you. Alrighty, guys, you know what? I'm gonna leave today's video here. I'm sorry I rambled on for quite a bit, and I'm sorry if I got a bit cut off there. I just realized my damn camera died. I forgot to charge it ever since I'd done Blank Dream. That was my bad. Anyway, guys, if you want me to do any more reverse shell tutorials, let me know, and I'll gladly do them, because there are way better ones, honestly, than that than netcat there are some that allow you to pull up webcam copy files super easily like you can copy files over netcat once you make a reverse shell but it's like super um difficult at least i believe it's a pain in the ass because you have to navigate to the netcat folder copy whatever file you want to copy to that folder in order to copy it to you know your main pc or wherever you're hacking from hmm but yeah, anyway guys, like I said, I'm going to leave today's video here because I'm all out of breath and I gotta go. TTPK signing off. Peace. It's loading up PowerShell again. Now it shouldn't mess up here. I gotta fix my code so it deletes that file forcefully. And I gotta say, this is all around really cool and I'm trying not to spoil it, but it gets freaking cool.